All right, welcome back to the One Bar in Lepagus show on this New Year's Eve. Oh. I don't have one of those. Here, blow it. I'll put it next to your screen. There we go. There we go. All right, we're going to be talking about the Vikings-Detroit Lions matchup and all sorts of fun stuff, so let's do this. Why do you have one of those? It's New Year's Eve. I always have one of these. I cannot wait. I'm very excited. There's no way in hell you're going to be up till midnight. Oh, there we right. I'm going to send you a video of me with beer in hand still. But also, before we get into this, remember, we're doing a giveaway. We're trying to get to 2,000 subscribers. Every video until we get to 2,000. All the commenters will be put in one pool and mm. randomly draw three. We're going to give away a hoodie. I would jump buck naked. Hoodies. So make sure to pool. comment. Hell yeah, do it. Like Six and subscribe. Nine. Yeah, six and nine Vikings at the five and ten lines. It is the battle of the bottom of the NFC North. A couple of turds fighting it out for, uh, I guess, I guess the one who ends up in the cellar. That's what yeah. it's going to be. Sad. So it is sad. Um, we all thought the Vikings would be a little bit better this year, um, but you know, injuries and things went awry. So right now, I think I hear something. It is the final one bar injury report of 2020. Well, let's start with the Lions. Some pretty big names here. Jamie Collins, linebacker, did not practice. Neck injury, Joe Dahl, back, did not practice. Kenny Galladay, hip, and Matthew Stafford, pretty much everything is hurting on that poor guy. He did yes. not practice. Limited were Frank Regnow with a throat and uh, Ty Tyrell Crosby. Hmm. Just as dinged up as the Vikings are. Yeah, for the Vikings, uh, as we know, Dalvin Cook is already out for the game, unfortunately. Uh, sad news there. Uh, Dan Bailey did not practice with the back, so maybe you'll get your wish of that random kicker coming in. Chris oh, yeah. Jones will break your heart that he did not practice. Cam Banzer did not practice. Afedio Denebo, Kendricks, Jalen Holmes. So there's uh, they're pretty beat up. Yeah, a couple of beat-up turds. I don't know if you can really have a beat-up turd. That's diarrhea is what a beat-up turd yeah, is. Pretty much. All right, so the big question is, and we touched on this a little bit when we scold with Dion when we tag team him yesterday. Um, gut feeling, or just truthfully, do you want the Vikings to win this game? Or what, what's more important, winning or losing? Uh, yeah, I, I do want the Vikings to win. I mean, if we were where the Lions are at pick seven and could get all the way up to like three, I might have a different answer. But we're at 13 right now. And uh, yeah, I, I want the Vikings to win this one. If they lose, will I be, you know, will I, will I lose sleep over it? No, but yes, I want them to win. Yeah, yeah, I also want them to win. I just think, you know, even if I said they didn't, I, I would be into the game once it gets going, want them to win, rooting for them to win. And I think it's important just because you got a young team, you don't want to end this season on a four-game losing streak, leave that horrible taste in your mouth by just getting destroyed by the Saints and losing against the Detroit Lions, uh, who really look like they cashed it in two weeks ago. They're not even trying out there. So I think you got to end the, no, end the season on some kind of positive note. Going into the offseason was a little bit of momentum. Um, so I think getting a win would be big. Um, going back to what you said about the draft position, the highest the Vikings can get is nine. The lowest they can get is 15. So they're going to be picking in that range. So if the Vikings do win and end up closer to that 15, who are, the, who are they going to miss out on if they don't lose this game? Well, at 15, I mean, they're going to miss out on really any solid edge rushers. I mean, that's that's definitely a need. You got guys like Greg Russo who will be long gone by then. You got Quiddy Pay, who I absolutely love yep. from yep. Michigan, um, and the quarterbacks. So you're going to be missing out on a lot to answer your question. But there are corner – we need help in the secondary. There's going to be guys there, guys like Wyatt Davis on the offensive line. There's going to be some tackles that are going to be floating around in that area. But those are the big names we'll be missing out on. I think we lose out on really any dominant defensive lineman. Yeah, to me, it's, it's the two edge rushers, Russo and, and Pay. Um, both would be just huge hole fillers for the Vikings. Get that pass rush back where it belongs. And then it's the quarterbacks, like you said. Um, if you get in, the, if you get up to nine, there's a possibility you get one of those guys fall on the board. Yeah. Um, but at 15, it looks very, very bleak. So, um, yeah, if you're sitting 15, I think the best you can hope for is pretty much Wyatt Davis at that point to fill an immediate need. Otherwise, I think you look to trade down. But, again, the draft is always moving parts. You never know who's going to be there, who's going to fall, who's going to rise, especially this year with not everybody playing. It's a real – it's a huge craft. It's a bigger craft shoot than normal. It is. It's a poop All shoot. Right. It, is a, it is a poop shoot. All right, let's jump into the game itself. 
Um, you know, Delvin Cook out, like you said, Riley Reef probably out. Uh, give me some, give me some players you expect to see more of in this season finale. Well, Zimmer's being pretty tight lipped, whether or not he's going to kind of cash it in and just see some young guys or if he's actually going to go for the win. So it's anybody guess at this point. Um, Ezra Cleveland, we talked about it yesterday. Would love to see him at left tackle uh, in his natural position. I would love to see Kyle Hinton at guard. That is my New Year's dream to see Kyle Hinton on the field, hopefully not let down. And then just the, the guys that we've kind of seen on defense sprinkled in, just more of them. I'd love to see more Harrison Hand. I'd love to see Blake Lynch. I'd love to see James Lynch, like, play a whole damn game. Ginger Snaps. Yeah, why not, too? I mean, why not? Shamar Steph and, and uh, Jill Johnson and Turds. I think we're going to see a lot of Mike Boone. I think he might get the majority of the carries. I know you think, you know, Madison's status is up in the air. So I would not be shocked one bit if, if Boone sees uh, almost a full workload. Oli Udo, is he going to finally be active? Is he going to show up in a Week 17 game for the second year in a row? And I also wouldn't mind seeing a little dash of old Josh Mattel sprinkled in there and then the secondary. Hell yeah, sprinkle why him not? in nice and thick especially if Anthony Harris isn't trying. And speaking of that, some guys you think we are probably going to see less of uh, in this season finale. Give me some. Uh, can we can we re- reword it to guys that I hope we see less of? Yeah, that's fine. That's fair. Uh, any defensive tackle that you already mentioned, Stefan, Jaleel Johnson, um, Jalen Holmes, I know is, is injured. I, I wouldn't mind seeing none of him if he's out there. Uh, Anthony Harris, I, I, I'm... I'm fine after last week's performance, the fact that he did not appear to be out there at all. Sprinkle in some Josh Metellus, as you said. And uh, I guess that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think if the Vikings get up big, we're not going to you – know, I think Cousins, Steelen will get pulled for sure. Uh, maybe Jefferson, I don't know. Harrison Smith might get pulled too, and Brian O'Neill. Um, the Vikings are up by like 25 in the fourth quarter or something. Yeah, and, and the obvious one that we didn't mention is just too obvious to mention, and that's the court of Dozier. Don't want to see him. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, like, I don't want to see him on the sidelines either. Um, if we get if we get 2,000 subscribers, will you stick that thing in your butt and try to blow it? No, but we will pick a random commenter and give away some hoodies. <laughs> and your blowy. You should give him that too. All right. You ready for a game? I'm ready for a game. I love games. I love them. Really? All right. This is a uh, quick hitters. I just want a yes or no from you. I'm going to give you some Vikings names and you tell me yes or no. Is this their final game in purple? I, no explanation. Do I get zapped if I try to talk? You don't, I don't want an explanation. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Yes. Anthony Harris. Done. No. Yes. Is this final game? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm already screwing up this game. Yes. This is his final game. Kyle Rudolph. Deep in my heart, I believe, yes, this is his final game. Harrison Smith. No, but I think it might be might be on the table. <laughs> Dakota Dozier. Yes, this is his final game. Hopefully final game in the NFL. <laughs> Jalil Johnson. Yes, final game. Sean Mannion. I'm gonna I'm gonna say no. I I don't think God. it is his final game. <laughs> uh Shamar Stefan. Yes, final game. Jalen Holmes. No, he's still got a year on that rookie contract. Yeah, but he'll have to fight. He'll have to fight if he makes the team again. Chris Jones. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say he's going to be back. Ugh. Dan Bailey. I am going to say no. I'm going to say he's going to be back. Britton Colquitt. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say Britton Colquitt will be back. Todd freaking Davis. Let's be clear. If Todd Davis ain't back, I'm not back. Todd Davis will be back. Wow. <laughs> All right, three more. Adam Thielen. Yes, he'll be back. Gary Kubiak. He's tied to Zimmer. He's back. Mike Zimmer. Mike Zimmer will be back, yes. All right, thank you for playing the game. You win a brand new Schwinn bicycle. Wow, thank you. Thank you for having me. That was a great, great game. I greatly appreciate it. Let me give you one, quick one. Drew Samia, will he make the team next year? Will he be back? He'll be around the preseason. It's not a – this isn't a preseason game. I'm still thinking. You know what? I'm going to say he he will be back. Unless there's a new coaching staff, he'll be back. Okay. Thank you for playing. Thank you. What do I win? This. Ugh, it's so wet right now, I bet. All right. So the Vikings are going to win this game. What are some things you think we're going to see? 
this game's such a mystery. It's such a we we don't know what we're gonna see. If they're gonna win this game, they're gonna run. They're gonna have to get some yards on the ground like they did the first game. Yes, we don't have Dalvin Cook, but they're gonna have to pound the ball. I don't care if it's Michael Boone, Amir Abdullah. I don't have. I, I have full confidence whoever it is is gonna get yards on the ground. They just gotta stick to it. Yeah, and then on the defensive side, if they're gonna win this game, they gotta stop the run. They can't get run over. Um, the other thing too, and they got. I think if they're gonna win this game, they're. I also think they're gonna throw the ball. Thielen, Jefferson, hit them. Smith, um, air that thing out there. Take some shots. Why not be aggressive? Uh, score quick. Score often. Uh, so I think the Vikings. Uh, I think we'll know early their effort level and if they actually truly want to win this game. Um, and if they're gonna lose, give me some things we're gonna see if they're gonna lose this game. I think we're gonna see Sean Mannion out there if they lose this game. Um, I think uh, I think if we lose this game, it's because we're probably playing a lot of people we wouldn't normally play. This Lions team is beat up. It's it's depressed. It's having a very, very rough end to the season. Another way they lose this game is if they all of a sudden decide to give a heavy dose of DeAndre Swift. If this guy gets a heavy workload, even, even against a team unlike the Vikings who can stop the run, he's going to put up some yards. This guy is a pretty damn good running back. So he could be a thorn in our sides. And, of course, Chase Daniel, if he's the quarterback, will be a serious issue because we cannot stop him. We can't stop any backup quarterback. That is a Mike Zimmer. That's just something he cannot figure out. Uh, the other thing, too, is if the Vikings are going to lose this, if, if everybody's playing like Anthony Harris did last week and not trying, not giving a shit, um, not making any sort of effort, you know, not even trying to tackle some guys. So if we start seeing that on multiple levels, uh, we will lose to the D Detroit Lions. And you we'll know what I'd there. love to see? I'd love to see on Sunday. I'd love to see some of these younger guys come out there that have not seen the field much with the fire up their ass. Mm -hmm. Show these guys who have been around the league, who've been out there and pissing and moaning and aren't giving it their all. Show them what it's, what it's supposed to be like. I'm counting on these young guys. If, if this oh. team comes out flat on Sunday, completely flat, I don't care if it's the third string guy, I'm going to be pissed off. You know what? I'm going to send this clip to Mike Zimmer. Have him play it for the boys the night before the game. <laughs> The boys. No <laughs> wonder why I'm so pale. I think I'm sick. All right. Uh, who is going to be your game changer? For my game, game my game changer is uh, Herb Smith. Herb Smith had two touchdowns last time he played these guys. He has come on ever since that game stronger and stronger. I know I mentioned the run a lot, but they will be throwing that thing. And, and Herb Smith could, uh, he could torment this defense a little bit. Yeah, he could, but my game changer is Mike Boontang. I think he's going to get a heavy load uh, all over him, and I think he's going to have a big game. He's the week 17 wonder. He's going to show it again. I'm going to say buck 50 and at least two touchdowns for Mike Boone. Love it. I would love it. Good, good. All right, I want your bold prediction. My bold prediction, the boldest prediction I've given all year, Sean Mannion will get his first career NFL touchdown pass. He really doesn't have one? No, he doesn't. He has three interceptions. He doesn't have a touchdown pass. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that could definitely happen. I'm going to say um, mine might be even bolder. I'm going to say the Vikings' run defense actually shows up and holds the Detroit Lions to under 100 yards on the ground. Wow. Led by the ginger snap, James Lynch. Wow. DeAndre Swift and a pissed-off Adrian Peterson. That's a, that's a bold – that is a bold statement. I, I told you it was bold. And you. we didn't we didn't hit on – let's just hit on the former Vikings quick, Everson Griffin, AP. Uh, AP, this could be the last time he's out on the field. I mean, you really believe that? You don't think we'll see him again? Well, he just seems every every offseason it's slower and slower for him to get re-signed by a team. I hope we see him more. We'll see. I, well, I think he's going to want to keep playing. So I think eventually, you know, teams will get injuries. It might not be till August he gets picked up by somebody. But I guarantee you we'll see Adrian Peterson in the NFL in 2021. Yeah, and we're going to see a real fired up Everson Griffin too. Yeah, his uh, – his Twitter rant last week was hilarious. Um, just wanted people to piss him off and the shit people were writing was great. Oh, had a good, good hearty giggle reading those. That's what he's good for. All right. So that's it. Final game preview of the 2020 season. Meaningless game unless you uh, factor in draft position for this one. We'll, uh, we'll be back with a preview video in 2021 or maybe our first video of the year, of the new year. How exciting is that? Very, very uh, and Until exciting. then, yeah. Yeah, it's very exciting. Until then, Remember this, end your 2020 knowing this little fact. Australian koalas are in danger of extinction because over half of them have chlamydia.